Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that happened last year on Leeches and it wasn't even Magnus playing this game or rather it wasn't up until this point that it wasn't Magnus playing this game uh, so it was uh, a, a gentleman named Lucky River, a Leeches master Lucky River and this was the position on the board when he decided that okay uh, I've uh, had it uh, with this position <laughs> I've already blundered too much let's just resign here but he didn't actually click resign so Magnus took over his place uh, and he started playing here but it was a uh, it was either um, a bullet game uh, uh, in a tournament where they both went ber berserk, so uh, they, they won both went down to 30 seconds, or it was uh, actually a hyper bullet game, so uh, could be uh, either of those. And here uh, they are playing against a gentleman named GMBMW. Uh, no idea who that is, that's why I am honoring him by, by wearing a hoodie, and hope you guys uh, are as well. Now, uh, how could a position like this happen already on move 5? Well, one way to do it is, uh, and there's no uh, clear way to um, actually uh, be certain of this but i reconstructed with something like d4 d5 pawn to e3 we have pawn to e5 now comes pawn to e4 or sorry pawn to f4 uh, and now pawn to e4, just blockading the center, and now uh, a knight to f3, which was a pre-move. So e captures on f3, uh, white played queen to d2, and now f captures on g2, and this is how such a position could happen on the board, and of course uh, the player that pre-moved um, uh, got off uh, fr from the table, he, he did not want to finish this game, and Magnus took his place and started playing this game. But interestingly, when Magnus took over, he was already down to 18 seconds on the clock. Uh, so he has 18 seconds uh, for the entire game and this is the position if you're interested in the official uh, e evaluation by by stockfish it is minus five for black which means that black is completely winning so okay bishop captures on g2 this is how magnus continues we have queen to h4 with check and now uh, i believe the move that um, uh, inspired me the most in this game is magnus's next move here magnus just played queen to f2 his idea is that uh, okay he's down a piece but he wants to trade queens and he's gonna improve the position of his king and i'm pretty sure that um uh, everyone watching this video including myself uh, if uh, faced with this position would probably just move the king king to f1 or king to a2 and try and uh, well uh, keep the position complicated, keep the, keep the queens on the board, but not Magnus, and we can all learn something from this game as uh, well, uh, who, who amongst us has not blundered a piece uh, uh, like this in the opening in, in, in a bullet in, or, or, or in a hyper bullet game. So, okay, queen to f2, and now uh, comes a move that you most certainly did not expect, and that is queen captures on h2, and black is also down extremely low on time, as Magnus had some 18 seconds when this game started, uh, his opponent had some 26 seconds when the game started so uh, basically the the game is only pre-moves so rook captures on h2 knight to f6 now and now pawn to c4 but interestingly even though magnus is now up material the, it will all even out uh, in, in a few moves so here knight to e4 attacking magnus's queen knight to c3 and now knight captures on f2 so magnus gives back the queen and now we have a fairly equal game where you know, it, it, it's just a game. King captures on f2 and pawn to c6, now defending on uh, d5. But not really, as it's attacked twice. So c captures, c captures, and now Magnus plays pawn to e4. He doesn't capture on d5. Like I said, these are all pre-moves. Knight to a6, we have knight captures on d5, knight to c7, and now pawn to e5. Opening up the bishop's diagonal, so king to d8, defending the knight, and now knight captures on c7. King captures captures and d5. Magnus could have captured on c7, uh, you know, uh, b b before the king defended it, but uh, he, he was uh, very much focused on pushing those pawns. So here, bishop to c5 with check, uh, bishop to e3, and now bishop captures and king captures. Uh, now, uh, because the king was on f2, because you've made that early queen trade, now bishop to e3 was possible. So you can see how it all works out very nicely. King to d7, we have rook to c1 now, uh, preparing d6 and rook to c7, we have king to d8 and now 
pawn to d6. We have bishop to d7. Now comes rook to c7, going after the b7 pawn. Rook to b8 defending, but now Magnus just gobbles it up. Rook captures on b7. Rook captures. We have bishop captures on b7. And now pawn to f6, striking against the white strong center here. Bishop to e4, and now f captures. We have f captures, and now Magnus will, of course, try to get his king to d5, push e6, and hopefully that will seal the deal. So h6, we have rook to c2 now, uh, trying to get the other rook to the 7th rank as well. Bishop to e6, uh, and now we have king to d4. We have king to d7, and now rook to c7 check. King to d8, and now bishop to c6 with check. Now all of these squares are covered by the pawn and by the bishop, and something like rook captures on a7, rook to a8 will be checkmate. So here we have rook to e8. Uh, either uh, something weird or trying to create some sort of a stalemating trap, which is very unlikely as there are so many uh, pawn moves possible. But okay, Magnus just grabs the pawn on a7. We have bishop to d7 now and the rook to a8 with check. We have bishop to c8 and finally now there is a mate in four. We have pawn to d7 now attacking the bishop and the only way to defend this is to move the king. So king to e7, uh, but uh, king to c7 was a bit more resilient. Here rook captures on c8 was played even though this is mate in one because of the pawn on e5 uh, but okay as all of the moves in this game are pretty much pre-moves rook captures on c8 was played rook to d8 now comes rook captures king captures and now king to d5 so can black promote his pawn or will white be quicker to checkmate uh, well the king is already on d5 so i don't have to tell you what happens so g5 pawn to e6 with g4 king to d6 Pawn to g3 as only pawn moves, uh, moves are possible now. And here Magnus just played pawn to e7. Uh, and this was now checkmate. Uh, so really incredible stuff by Magnus uh, taking over this position in, in a completely lost position with only 18 seconds on the clock uh, and just, um, uh, you know, j just straight out winning. And against the, an opponent rated, rated almost 2,500, which is incredible uh, in itself. Uh, but like I said, okay, the, as most of the uh, game uh, uh, were pretty much pre-moves, the thing I found the most interesting was that after this check, uh, Magnus just offered a queen trade. So next time I blunder a piece like this i'm just gonna also offer a queen trade and play a normal game so that seems to be if it's good enough for the world champion obviously that is the way to go so maybe something you can take from this game and also i definitely suggest watching the actual footage of this game will be the first link in the description below uh, you can see how uh, magnus is just you know uh, barely paying attention to the game, uh, singing, browsing his phone and playing this game uh, and then just winning. Uh, so pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Uh, do check it out. First link in the description below. Uh, have at it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A bit of a shorter one. I'm still uh, recovering from my uh, from my uh, illness that, that struck me, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for the past two days. Like I said, my, my daughter brought something from the kindergarten, kindergarten and there's the, the, the nastiest stuff possible you can find there. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you blunder a piece, don't resign. You know, go for the end game. And if you're a strong end game player, you should be able to win. Uh, if your opponent blunders the queen as well, uh, that that um, should also help. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Lister Pan, Joshua Baker, Derek, uh, Alex Williams, uh, Stephen Pryor, and um, uh, Sashandri Subramanian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.